Hello everyone. A warm welcome to one and all for today's webinar on introduction to penetration testing. Let us wait for a minute for all our joiners to join in. Okay, a warm welcome to one and all once again. I'm Surbhi Jain, your speaker for today. I work as a senior automation engineer for Decos since past three and a half years. I have an overall experience of almost seven years in the field of automation testing, that is testing of web, desktop and mobile applications. Today we would look at penetration testing as a topic and let us now begin. Our agenda for today is, we will learn what is penetration testing, why your organization needs penetration testing, the types of penetration testing, what is OWASP and its top 10 list, and we would also have a brief demo of penetration testing on a web application. First, let us look at what is penetration testing. A penetration test is also known as a pen test or ethical hacking. It is an authorized simulated cyber attack on a computer system performed to evaluate the security of the system. It aims to outsmart the hackers by exposing the weak links or security gaps inside a system. This kind of testing creates real world scenarios that show businesses how well their current defenses would fare when confronted with a full scale cyber attack. Now that we know what is penetration testing, let us understand why would an organization need such kind of a testing. The first need identified is to reduce the chances of network and application downtime. Network loss or application downtime leads to loss of productivity and availability. As we all know, time equals money. So any loss of time due to such inactivity can cost companies and those affected lose millions of dollars. The second need is save on cost. Recovery and remediation cost after a breach costs heavily, whereas a well-designed pen test would be just a fraction of it. The next need is it helps us to manage risk. If you're using a third party application, outsource services or cloud-based services, then it is imperative to have pen testing done. It helps to manage risk by defending against vulnerabilities and warding of threats, which have the potential to become actual events. The next need is, it helps an organization to adhere to regulatory compliance and laws across security. Regulatory standards laid down in HIPAA, ISO 27001 and others require organizations to do mandatory testing and audits of their security system. By failing to do so, the company could be charged with hefty fines. And lastly, it contributes to safeguard your organization's reputation. It takes just one security incident to impact your customer's trust. Pen test helps to hold on your customer base and organization's reputation.
before we go deep into the topic let us try to understand if your organization performs security testing Okay, thank you for the poll. I'm happy to see the response and we have known that many of the organizations do perform security testing. Let's understand and learn more about penetration testing and know its impact. What are the types of penetration testing? Penetration testing includes black box, white box and gray box penetration test. Black box penetration testing. This is typically the least expensive option. The testing analyst receives no background information. The black box most closely resembles a real hacker's experience. The next is white box penetration test. This is often the most expensive but also the most accurate and comprehensive of all the three types. In this assessment, the tester is given extensive information about the environments before testing. White box tester usually has an administrator or a root level access. The next type of test is gray box penetration testing. This is typically priced between a black and a white box test but varies depending on the scope of the engagement. With the gray box penetration test, the analyst receives some information to help with their research. Gray box tested is authenticated testing at a user level and it should be used for almost all web applications that require user access. Now, let us understand what is OWASP? OWASP is an acronym for Open Web Application Security Project. It is a non-profit foundation that works to improve the security of the software. It was founded in the year 2001 by Mark Surfey. It is a community of tens of thousands of members and it boasts around 30,000 plus participants. It has more than 65 organizational supporters and over 4,500 OWASP financial members. It is an open community dedicated to enabling organizations to conceive, develop, acquire, operate, and maintain applications that can be trusted. OWASP top 10 list aims to raise awareness about application security by identifying some of the most critical risks facing organizations. Now we have another poll. It will be up in a while. Here it is. So the question is, what do you focus on security testing? Whether it's OWASP top 10 issues or whether it is researching new threats as well. Thank you. We see that many of the organizations focus 
more on the OWASP top 10 security risk. So let us look at the top 10 security risk identified by OWASP in its 2021 update. We will also look at few specific real life examples which would emphasize the relevance of the cyber security risk. Most of the examples taken are in the reference to the blog of real life examples of OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities by Horangi, which is a Singapore based cyber security company. The first security risk on the OWASP top 10 list is broken access control. Broken access control means that the attackers can gain access to user accounts and act as users or administrators to gain unintended privileged functions. If authentication and access restriction are not properly implemented, then it's easy for the attackers to access unauthorized information such as sensitive files or user privilege settings. A user can perform unauthorized actions without correct permissions or he can misconfigure cause or even manipulate JWT token. Let us understand broken access control with the help of example. The first example is use of insecure IDs. Assuming I am logged in into a website and my user ID is 1337. When I go to my own profile page, the URL will look something like this. This page might contain sensitive data which no other user should ideally see. But if I replace this ID with another user's ID and if the web server is not configured properly, then I would get to see the profile page of another user along with all its sensitive data. This was an example of use of insecure IDs. Another example is forced browsing. A web application's admin page is usually not accessible to any of the users. But if a user manipulates the URL, as we see over here, then he might gain access to the admin page if the access control is broken. Broken access control attack was faced by Facebook. An independent security researcher figured out that a malicious user could add himself as an administrator of any Facebook business page and deny access to the legitimate page manager or admin. This issue was immediately looked into and the organization did not suffer much. The next cyber security risk is cryptographic failures. This was formerly known as sensitive data exposure. Attackers often target sensitive data such as passwords, credit card numbers or any personal information when the data is not properly protected. A cryptographic failure is a vulnerability that exposes sensitive application data on a weak cryptographic algorithm. Cryptographic failures describe every threat that can arise as a result of storing the data in a clear text format or use of default crypto keys or not using recommended cryptographic algorithm or even use of weak encryption methods. Let us understand a cryptographic failure attack scenario. In this scenario, the attacker initially gains access to the organization's network. The attacker uses an application flaw to retrieve a password database. Since the database used is un used unsalted hashes to encrypt passwords, the attacker uses a rainbow table to expose the passwords. Now, what do you mean by a rainbow table? 
A rainbow table is a database that is used to gain authentication by cracking the password hash. It's a pre-computed dictionary of all the possible plain text passwords and their corresponding hash values that can be used to find out what plain text password produces a particular hash. The attacker then uses credential stuffing tools to test credential pairs on their website. Credential stuffing is automated injection of stolen username and password pairs into website login forms in order to fraudulently gain access to the user accounts. Cloudflare Inc, an American content delivery network and mitigation company suffered a cryptographic failure attack. Cloudflare's edge server vulnerability was identified by Google's Project Zero team. The flaw was related to a buffer overrun which caused the servers to return memory which contained private information that included cookies, tokens, and post bodies. To make things worse, some of the data was even cached by search engines. The next security risk is an injection attack. Injection occurs when an attacker exploits insecure code to insert their own code into the program. It is a malicious code injected into the network which fetches information or performs activities that would ordinarily need an authenticated user account. Injections include SQL injections, command injections, CRLF, LDAP, and so on. A typical example of injection attack is cross-site scripting attack. The main purpose of this attack is to steal the other user's identity data, such as cookies and session tokens, which would help users to log in automatically. Let us see a simple example of cross-site scripting attack. Consider we have a website with a search field. If this search field is vulnerable and user enters any JavaScript input, then the script will be executed. Consider user enters a simple script as shown over here and the user hits on the search button. On click of the search button, the entered script gets executed. This just shows the vulnerability of the cross-site scripting attack. Ideally, the search field should not be vulnerable and any JavaScript input entered should not execute. We should only see the message there were, that there were no results found. You must have heard about Panama Papers scandal. This security incident was one of the largest data breaches in the history, which leaked more than 11,500,000 offshore financial records. As per Horangi, the records included those of several current as well as former world leaders. One of the identified possible attack vectors was in SQL injection flaw. So far we have seen some security loopholes. Let us understand from you if you have had any security incident. Oh, we see that many organizations did have a security incident at any point of time. Lucky are the ones who have not been there. Let us now continue with the next security risk listed by OWASP. The fourth on the list is 
insecure design. As the name indicates, insecure design are those vulnerabilities that exist due to lack of security implementation in your application at the time of development. It is focused on the risk associated with the flaws in design and architecture. It focuses on the need for threat modeling, secure design patterns and principles. Insecure design denotes that the best practices for designing an application has not been taken into consideration. Let us understand this attack with the help of a scenario. In the following scenario, the attacker exploits a poorly designed API that does not properly filter input. Firstly, the attacker scans for vulnerable APIs and identifies an API that does not use the organization's API security gateway. The attacker then injects a malicious script into the vulnerable API and then waits for the victim to access the API through application. Once the victim accesses, the browser loads the content with a malicious script. Anyone who uses the API unknowingly gets infected with a malicious script. A real life example of insecure design vulnerability is distributed denial of service attack on major websites like Twitter, Spotify, Netflix, and many others in the year 2016. Cyber criminals targeted a large DNS provider with supported websites like Twitter, Spotify, Netflix, PayPal, and Reddit. By launching a denial of service attack on the DNS provider, hackers blocked people's browsers from accessing the servers of many popular websites. The next security risk is security misconfiguration. Security misconfigurations are security controls that are inaccurately configured or left insecure, putting your system and data at risk. These vulnerabilities occur when a web application component is prone to attack due to misconfiguration or an insecure configuration. A classic example of security misconfiguration is directory listing. If directory listing is not disabled on the server and if attacker discovers the same, then the attacker can simply list directories to find any file and execute it. It is also possible to get the actual code base which contains all your custom code and then to find serious flaws in the application. Let us now look at a security misconfiguration attack scenario. In the following attack scenario, the attacker exploits the network devices that are using default credentials. Firstly, the attacker gains access to the organization's internal network. The attacker then scans the network for devices and performs dictionary checks to determine which devices are using default credentials. The attacker then logs in to the vulnerable devices using the default password and takes over. AWS S3 bucket leakage attack is a real life example of a security misconfiguration. It was suffered by cannabis. Cannabis users' sensitive data was exposed in a data breach. Over 85,000 files were leaked in this data breach, which included over 30,000 records with sensitive, personally identifiable information. The leak also included scan government and company IDs which were stored in the Amazon S3 bucket through Amazon Simple Storage Service. Another attack was faced by Pegasus Airlines. In a blog published by Safety Detectives, around 2300,000 documents were stored 
in an unprotected AWS S3 bucket, which equated about 6.5 TB of data. The exports data included flight data files that were flight charts, revisions, insurance documents, pre-flight checks, and lot of crew information. The next security risk is vulnerable and outdated components. A software component is a part of a system or application that extends the functionality of the application, such as a module, a software package, or an API. Using components with known vulnerabilities would make your application prone to the attacks that may target any part of the application stack. Majority of web apps are built using open source or third party components. If those components are vulnerable, so will be your web application. Component based vulnerabilities occur when a software component is outdated, vulnerable, or has unsupported software. Or if the software component does not run vulnerability scans or if it performs patching only after a few months, or if your software component has no compatibility test. Let us understand with the help of a scenario. In this scenario, the attacker gets access to the internal, to the organization's internal network. The attacker then identifies all the outdated and unpatched systems. On identification, the attacker injects the malicious code through system flaws. Log4j2 vulnerability is an outdated component attack. The Log4j issue is a type of remote code execution vulnerability. It is a very serious attack that allows an attacker to drop malware or ransomware on the target system. On December 9, 2021, Apache Log4j2 was identified being exploited by major online service providers like Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, and Google. The initial reported vulnerability allowed unauthenticated users to execute malicious commands on systems which impacted many applications. The next cybersecurity risk is identification and authentication failure. Identification and authentication failures occur when functions related to a user's identity, authentication, or session management are not implemented correctly. Attackers may be able to exploit these failures by compromising passwords, keys, session tokens, or exploit implementation flaws to assume other users' identities. A simple example of this risk is if an authenticated user forwards a URL of the site to another user to know about the discounted sales of a product. He emails this link without knowing that he's also sharing his session ID. When this link is accessed by the recipient, the session and the credit card details are also compromised. Let us now look at a scenario. In the following scenario, an attacker performs credential stuffing against an application that does not implement automated threat techniques. So firstly, the attacker obtains a password database from the hacker forum. Since a weak hashing algorithm was used to encrypt the passwords, the attacker can expose the user credentials. The attacker then uses credential stuffing tools to test the credentials on different websites. If the login is successful, 
the attacker knows that they have set the set of valid credentials. The attack on South Carolina's Department of Revenue was due to identification and authentication failure. A few years ago, South Carolina's Department of Revenue suffered a massive hack due to weak or insecure password used by an employee. As a result, 3,600,000 taxpayers' social security numbers and around 387,000 credit cards numbers were stolen. Now we know why our IT support team always enforces us to use a strong password. The stronger the password, the more protected your computer would be from hackers and malicious software. The next cyber security risk is software and data integrity failure. Software and data, gritty, uh, data integrity failures relate to code and infrastructure that does not protect against integrity violations. Use of critical data or apps without verification of their identity falls under this category. An example of this is where an application relies upon plugins, libraries, or modules from untrusted sources, repositories, and content delivery networks. Some of the factors which lead to security weaknesses are use of outdated and unsupported third-party software, or insufficient vulnerability scanning, erroneous input validation across the pipeline, missing framework or platform patches, missing unit test, or insecure component configurations. Let us understand with the help of a scenario. In the following scenario, an attacker exploits an insecure CI-CD pipeline and installs malicious code to be distributed through build and deploy process. So the attacker first identifies an organization's insecure CI-CD pipeline and installs malicious code in it. The infected code is then deployed to the production. The attacker waits for this code to be accessed by the users. When a customer unknowingly downloads the application, he downloads the malicious code as well. The attacker then uses the malicious code to gain access to the customer's network. Solar Wind was a victim of software and data integrity failure. The Solar Winds hack was all over the news in the late 2020 and early 2021. The attackers managed to access a development server which was used by many Fortune 500 companies and they inserted malicious code into installation packages like updates and patches. As a result, when the customers downloaded them, they also downloaded the malicious code. Once installed, this patch is created backdoors used by the attacker to install more malware to spy on the victims. The next cybersecurity risk is security logging and monitoring failures. Logging and monitoring practices provide raw data that helps to identify all the possible threats. With the help of this data, system administrator explores the data and identifies unusual patterns. These processes act as pillars that are foundation for a robust security framework. Logging is useful in tracing back when the system shows any abnormal behavior. Failure or absence of logging highly impacts transparency, visibility, and incident alerting. Some of the vulnerabilities of logging and monitoring failures are unavailability of server failure logs, identification of false alarms, missing logs for logging and failed attempts, 
unable to detect suspicious or alarming future situations or even unable to find any insight or useful information due to vague and broken locks. Let us understand with the help of a scenario. In the following scenario, the attacker exploits an organization that does not use adequate logging and monitoring. So the attacker gains access to the internal network and then runs a scanning tool to locate the internal systems with known vulnerabilities. He then obtains the sensitive data. Since the organization does not follow any adequate logging and monitoring practice, they are unable to detect the attack. So the data breach continues undetected for months. The British Airways attack was a security logging and monitoring failure attack. In 2018, British Airways was hit by a major data breach that remained undetected for nearly two months. The company was finally alerted by a third party. Among the sensitive information accessed by the attacker, there were personal data of approximately 400,000 customers and staff. This included names, addresses, and payment card numbers. The last security risk on the OWAP's top 10 list is server-side request forgery. It refers to an attack where an attacker can send a crafted request from a vulnerable web application. The attacker sends request from the backend server of the application. Criminals usually use this attack to target internal systems that are behind firewalls and are not accessible from the external network. SSRF vulnerabilities occur when an attacker has full or partial control of the request, which is sent by the web application. A common example is when an attacker can control the third party service URL to which the web application makes a request. The attacker can manipulate the URL by replacing them with the new ones or by tampering the URL with a URL path traversal. In this scenario, the attacker exploits an application that makes call to an internal resource on the same network. So firstly, the attacker identifies an application that is vulnerable to SSRF attack. Attacker then sends a forged request to the vulnerable application and targets the internal resource that resides on the same network. The application then sends the forged request to the internal resource and receives a response with the requested data. The application then sends the data back to the attacker by passing detection. A real life example of this attack is Microsoft's Exchange SSRF vulnerability, which led to fraudulent HTTP request and authentication. In the year 2021, Microsoft announced an Exchange Server vulnerability that was used as an SSRF attack against government and private organizations. After the attackers gained access to the servers, they deployed web shell scripts that enabled them to steal data and perform additional malicious actions. So those were the top 10 security risks listed by OWASP in the 2021 update. Let us now look at few of the penetration testing tools which are available in the market. They are Network Mapper, Burp Suite, Zap, John the Ripper, Hydra, Nikto, Nessus, Kali Linux, and Metasploit. We now have a small demonstration on few of the cyber security risk.
just give me a minute. Yes. We will be considering Acunetics application to understand an injection attack. This application is designed to demonstrate vulnerabilities. So we'll be looking at a cross-site scripting attack. To recollect, a cross-site scripting attack is an attack where an attacker manages to get their JavaScript code executed along with the main application in the client's browser. So we have this application wherein we have a search box. If I try to search for any text present on the application, then it should ideally give me the search results. Let me retry. So if I try to search for any text, say, put an epsom, then I would see all the relevant search results. But if the search box is vulnerable and I try to insert any JavaScript in it, then the JavaScript gets executed. So the JavaScript which was entered included cookie data. So I can see the cookie data in the pop-up. This should ideally not happen and I should get just no search results for the entered search string in the search box. This was an example of cross-site scripting. Let us look at another example of security misconfiguration. In this, if I try to alter the URL by appending some junk data in it, so this was a URL of the home page, and I have just appended an asterisk uh, to the URL. What I see is the details which of the server nginx along with the version so ideally these details should not be seen to the end user as the as the end user can know this detail and it can be exploited this flaw is usually termed as banner grabbing so that was the demonstration Please let us know if you have any questions. We have received a few questions. Let me try to answer them. The first question is, how do we keep ourselves updated on the latest security threats? Okay. In order to stay up to date on the latest security threats, one can look up to news streams, blogs, or websites. We have news streams like the Hacker News or Dark Reading, the Register or the Bleeping Computer. In fact, today morning itself, I read on Bleeping Computer that Uber has been hacked. The company's internal systems, email dashboard and the Slack server are hacked. 
so bleeping computer is uh, a good uh, website to know or to keep updated on the latest security threats we have few blogs as well uh, such as the blogs from google or cloudfare which keep uh, posted about the observations and experiences uh, faced by different organizations we also have another organization called as sans uh, which have the top type uh, top 25 security risk just like owasp and if you wish to learn more about infrastructure related risk then we have a website known as cisa so these references would uh, help one to keep updated on the latest security threats the next question we have received is how do you secure a deployed application okay um there are many ways wherein you can secure your application the first thing which can be done is uh you can implement a firewall you could also have some security checklist which could be specific to the application like apache or mysql on your system one could enforce use of https which would also help to secure the data in transit or even use of mfas would uh, help one to secure the user accounts and apart from all this we can also have application audits which could be performed regular regularly to detect any improper access or any incident so uh, these are few of the ways wherein we can secure an application if you wish to learn more about it you can contact us so that is all for today i hope this webinar gave you greater insights into owasp top 10 security risk if you have any more questions please get in touch the contact details are on the screen we would be happy to help you for your penetration testing needs also please note a recorded version of this webinar will be available on our website in a week from now we will also send you an email with the link on your registered email id to access this webinar i would like to thank you for your time have a great day ahead